technician A says a voltage drop test of the charging circuit should be performed when current is flowing through the circuit. Technician B says to connect the leads of a voltmeter to the positive and negative terminals of the battery to measure the voltage drop of the charging system. Who is right? Of only. Technician A is correct because current must be flowing to measure the drop or resistance in the circuit. Technician B is wrong because connecting the meter across the battery shows battery voltage drop or state of charge and not charging circuit voltage drop, which is done at the output terminal of the alternator. Two technicians are explaining how to adjust a drive belt when replacing an alternator. Technician A says on a serpentine belt. The tension is adjusted by moving the tensioner up or down. Technician B says to recheck tension run the engine for one hour to see if the belt is in the specified range for a used drive belt after the alternator has been replaced. Who is right? Neither A nor B both are wrong. Technician A is wrong because tensioner systems are automatic and not adjustable. Technician B is wrong because you generally check tension after 15 minutes not 1 hour. Technician A says to test for maximum current output. The battery must be loaded to force the generator to produce its maximum output. Technician B says after disassembly, all AC generator internal components should be tested using an ammeter. Who is right? Of only, Technician A is right and Technician B is wrong because the tool to be used is an ohm meter as part of a DMM digital multimeter. Why should the lights be turned on when checking for ripple voltage or AC current from the alternator? Create electrical load, checking for ripple measures the integrity of the alternator internal components and must be tested under load with system on to measure voltage. The battery must be at 75% charge for this test.
Technician A says a loose serpentine alternator drive belt could cause overcharging. Technician B says undersized wiring between the alternator and the battery could cause undercharging. Who is right? B only, Technician A is wrong because a slipping belt will cause undercharging. Technician B is correct because undersized wiring will cause undercharging due to higher resistance.